Hi, hey, hi. Hi. It's me. And I'm not going to say who you are yet. Oh. Neil Brennan's here. I'm Neil Brennan. <laughs> this is my podcast. And I'm not going to introduce it anymore. Guys, if you haven't figured out what the premise of the podcast is, click on a different episode and you'll get it there. My guest today is a man that I've known 2008, 2008, seems, seems nine. Uh, yeah. We, of course, we worked together on some award winning Best Buy commercials back to school. With my cousin Andy starting college, I thought I'd drop off some Best Buy gear to get him up to speed. Oh my God. Back to school 2018. Oh you, who could forget it? Uh, two years in a row? Yeah. Back yeah. To back. Goddamn. Had to well, run if it, it ain't broke, if it ain't broke, run it on back. <laughs> Adam Devine. Uh, now, I don't even, how do you, when people say, people say, that was, I like your delay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people say, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're oh, like, yeah. what do I, what am I supposed to do when someone <laughs> says my name? Give it three seconds That's and it. throw up the dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stare uh, dead, dead into camera yeah. and throw up the dudes. What do you consider yourself? Just comedy person, comedian, mm -hmm. actor? Both. Yeah. All the stuff. What what should the Chiron be? We're not going to have one. But what what would it be? Actor comedian. Great. Yeah. But things are going well, very well for you. Mm -hmm. You as of guys, as of this moment, and this is going to air in a month or some number one movie on Netflix. That's right. Bigger than Raiders of the Lost Ark five, which means. He's more talented than hair support. That is exactly what it means. That's did you draw that conclusion? Yeah, I know. I did. immediately. Yeah, <laughs> um, I called my dad and told him bigger yeah. than Harrison Ford. Hey, remember Deal that? Hey, where's your boy? <laughs> hey, Dad, where's your boy at now? Yeah, he's huh? fucking. He underperformed yeah. at the box office. Where he is? Mm -hmm. Your son, though. Your son's worldwide. Not at the yeah. box office, and you'll hang up. Yeah, not at the, not at the box office. <laughs> It's not about the box office this anymore, okay? Is stupid. This is this, this is, is the streaming. Literally stupid. Yeah. Don't be an idiot, Dad. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm cutting your cell phone off. Um, because you pay for a cell phone in this in this, in this scenario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you probably do. still and you probably do anyway. Um, I pay for my mom's cell phone. I'm not gonna lie about it. You do? Mm -hmm. I think I'm still on my parents' plan. That's very funny. I think I I think they I pay them to still be on the plan to keep my same phone number. Because I've had the same phone number since I was a sophomore in high school. Great. It's super annoying because I get prank phone calls every day. Well, <laughs> <laughs> every day, dude. And this you know, the, people, the fact that this wasn't on your box list is a, an atrocity. It doesn't, bug, it doesn't bug me. Why See, not? I, I thought because you because you feel like I I if I it can't hate the player if I you know what I mean? Hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah, can't hate the player. I'm like this is part of it, and also I'm like I'm not gonna get a new phone and have to like because I'm sure you know like famous people that get a new phone number every week, and then you can never track your friend down. You're like, I would like to no, text you. No, it's worse than that. You have to call someone else to get their number. Yeah. Like you're uh, working for, uh, yeah, uh, as if like you're a, TMZ, you're to, like yes, you're, you're, the, exactly. you're holding a skateboard in a We're cubicle. We're holding a fundraiser. Yeah. <laughs> Can you submit a, a baseball glove? Yeah, I work for the DNC. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, you so, have to track them down. And it, you're, so I appreciate it. I'm keeping it. And yep. it, I guess, you know, if I don't know the number, I just don't answer. I like how now it goes like maybe spam Neil Brennan, probable spam. Yeah. Maybe it might be Maybe this Neil? person. Yes. Could be. Totally agree. And also, just hit block. Mm -hmm. It's blocking changed. Well, what you could do, what uh, the real psychopaths do, uh, specifically, to, they're, they're going to listen to this and be like, oh, I'm coming after you now. Um, I have a very, Adam. I have a very um, unhinged yeah, I can audience. tell. I yeah, can yeah, tell. yeah, yeah. I do a lot uh, of mental health stuff. It's part of the pressure. Uh, I get prank calls, but it's just people crying. It's just help me. <laughs> I'm depressed too. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm like, fucking lose my yeah, number. The, the mushrooms didn't work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the, they like, I, I think there must be some kind of service online. I'm so old. Uh, some kind of where you could just get a fake number. Like Somebody have bought a number. my get a fake number there's a burn there's an app burner app i think that must be it because yeah. every time it's like a new number and then they'll leave like little messages on the on my answer machine so i never it's always full like if my agent is trying to call me they're like i yeah, get a text no. being like your mailbox is full again. 
Uh, and but it's just little Merlins. It's, like, yeah. Will what it, will it be? It's like why aren't you coming <laughs> out to party, Adam? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm like, because um, I'm 39 years old now. I don't go out on Tuesdays. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, so it seems like it's going great, and it doesn't seem to be waning, as proof by having the number one movie. Yeah. I mean, look, I lot. I think a lot of that's Alan Barkin. I might be Pierce. Which one? Could be I think Pierce what's funny is a guy like Pierce, you probably didn't realize how famous he was until you saw him in person. You were like, fuck, that's Dude. fucking Pierce Brosnan. Well, I knew, you know, because, yeah, you know, cause he was yeah. my James Bond. Yeah. yeah. Name's Bond. James Bond. So uh, he was golden eye, you know, and, and I played that Say game no more. religiously. And uh, I was like, he's super famous. But you are right. When you see like a really, especially a good looking famous person. Like yep. you see like yes. someone who's like just a comedy famous person, like a Martin Short or something. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah, fuck. He's it's like kind of my, uh, my uncle. Look at him go. Yeah. Uh, and then you see Pierce Brosnan and you're like, something happens deep within you. I had, I took, I did a uh, Men in Black 2 commercial with uh, Hemsworth. Yeah. Put it, put it up. Um, deuces. <laughs> Um, and Hemsworth had apparently flown from Australia that day or something. First of all, there's a picture of me and him. You can't fucking believe how good looking he is. And yeah, then dude. there's a picture of me and picture of me and mm -hmm. Tessa Thompson. Hemsworth does like the sneak behind and my camera is like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> the camera redirected The camera's itself. like, yo, get the fuck yeah, out of the stop, way. Stop what you're there's doing. A, there's an Adonis behind you. Yeah leave that's been basically my like uh, my uh not my whole career but like uh, it seems like that's the the path that hollywood wants to push me in like super handsome man and then i'm also there well it's, it's like just zach like efron me liam hemsworth me pierce brosnan and then i'm also there i think it's just i look hilarious next to these guys well the other funny thing is like you're pretty good looking it's the cameras and impossible. Yeah, I feel like I'm a good looking guy in a in a like a really small town. Yes. Like if I was you're in a, a really villain. small town. You're a you're villain like, in a small town. In a small in a small <laughs> ski town, you're a villain. You think? Yeah, man. I feel like I'd be the good looking guy who's just like, oh, we gotta get these I feel like yeah, Anders Holm save the senior from center? workaholics. He's the ski town good looking You're right. Guy. Yeah. You'd be one of his buddies. Yeah. <laughs> You'd yeah, be like, I'd be one of the sh Yeah, get him, dude. You'd like say something to the guy at like at when the when you guys were all legs and you go, thought so. Yeah, that's right. I'm always pulling punches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the uh, way, I should make that movie. I would love a the good ski. second most evil guy. Yeah. Anytime you want to make an evil ski movie parody. Not parody. We're it's gonna be we're gonna keep it very we're gonna it's wipe gonna it straight face. <laughs> 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 like it works if if it's there if you want mm -hmm. it. Okay, let's do some blocks. We, okay. That's enough grab ass. All right. Um, <laughs> Sorry, dude. Sorry, man. No, no. I don't, I don't, God. Are you going to be like this? <laughs> um, okay. Blocks. Adam Devine. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs> Number one block. I like to be liked. Yeah. Okay, why suck? is that a block? Well, because it uh, it bothers me. You know, you read stuff online or you uh, mostly just stuff online where you're just so like, you don't, why, I, okay. I got, I'm why are you, mean. why would you say such mean things? Like, I'm just trying to do funny stuff and whether you d dislike it, like, I, I guess I'm not the type of person that would dislike something and then have to go tell that person. Yes. So it, it does, it so does bug me more I, than I want it to, but I mean, it's not ruining my the life. The issue but. isn't to me. I read the issue as because I have we all have it right yeah. we the every human being wants to be liked for sure we have a place that called the comment section mm -hmm. <laughs> or Twitter or whatever where we the problem is when we start like so what do you guys think yeah and then well that's within it. that by the way the ratio is still 10 to 1 like if not 50 to 1 like uh huh but the I just had to stop I just have a I just stop first of all, blocking words block words you can do it on YouTube you can do it on Twitter threads really 
Yeah, you can block know. words. Oh, wow. Can I suggest some things you might want to block? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started yeah, insulting. Yeah, just uh, uh, okay. chubby face, neck fat. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, you, so you so you, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know. Um, all right, so yeah, so you can block words. Huge. Wow. Huge. Yeah, cool. Um, so, and and also you can't give yourself access to it. It's not that often. Most times I brush it off, but then every once in a while you're like, you work so hard on a thing and then, you know, people say mean shit or just like a review and you're like, how, how do you hate it this badly? Like it, <laughs> it doesn't seem like, yeah, like it, there's that, why do you have so much hate for this thing? Yeah. It uh, seems like you could just go on with your day and continue to live your life and not even think twice about this thing. Right. But that's where your kind of good looking comes in. That's where yeah. success comes in. That's where like you always seem tan. No one likes that. <laughs> um, yeah. And like, there's just a lot of things that people are basically, they're just jealous, right? Yeah. Well, I'm no, and I, I don't with... say that like chill as much. Like I get it. I'm jealous of plenty of people. Yeah. So I don't now I don't, snap at them on instagram or i or whatever like will i send a hate you will will i send yep. like a <laughs> will i send it to my group chat you know i will <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not gonna you're never gonna know about it yeah thank you neil and the <laughs> so you know um so the other the other thing i would say is it's like a if we don't solicit it we can't see it if we don't need the if we don't have the hunger we're well, never going to see the negative comment. The issue is, is like when my agents or managers will send me like a good review. I think I know where you're going. And Keep you're going. like, oh, hell yeah. Like, look at this. And then you're like, and the good reviews are going to, are rolling in, now baby. Now we wait. Well, Get gobble, me my neck Gobble, pillow. gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble. And then you hmm. start to read the reviews and hmm. you're like, well, this was the one. You sent me the one. And the yeah, rest of them. You can't ever read reviews yeah. you literally just no, I, I had it when this is how long i've known this when me and dave were writing half-baked this is how fucking long ago this is there was a article about woody allen in the new yorker that this is how long ago this was mm -hmm. about how great he was and one of the, the quote and i had it on my wall it was like allen saves his anxiety for action and he said like don't read reviews just keep your head down and do the work. And I, that's right. That's I, the good advice. Again, that's like the best. Yeah. And that's all I know about Woody Allen. Uh, <laughs> so, but do I look, they, sometimes they leak in, but I, I, the thing you were saying about like, they send you a review and they sent it to you because it's, it, that's why they would send it. Yeah. <laughs> It's the good one. Because if they're all good, then they're not going to send you a hundred yeah. link. I have to, and it's also, still the, it, it's still the good review that they sent me, which was so funny, dude. It was the New York Times, and it said, Adam Devine is funny at last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Which I, li I liked. I'm like, that's funny. It's also, it's also. Like, it's a uh, funny backhanded, like, he liked the movie. Yeah. But it, well, there's always in everyone, every positive review has a, but I ain't no bitch paragraph. Yeah. Like, at the, good review of the movie, and they're like, but by the way, he's, some yeah. of these, sometimes some, he's awful. He yeah. does an accent one of the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> that's a I'm fucking really embarrassment. Yeah. Despite that, over, like, there's always this, yeah, like, that's look, true. looky here. So, but yeah, but that's, you know. That's why you moved I, out here, though, I is to feel, be like, so you have to, you know. Yeah. No one dislikes you in person. That's mm -hmm. the thing. It's all, no one's going to say any, did someone say sell out to you in person? No, no one's <laughs> ever said that in person. So two comments. Yeah. And you're and like. And can, it can really ruin your day. <laughs> no, yeah. But, but I, I feel I'm, I'm a pretty well adjusted person. I do too. So uh, it doesn't really, it's just, you know, you, you, you made me write a list of five things that yeah. uh, no, kind of no. bum me out. So I was like, yeah. Yeah. Kind no, of I get it. You are well adjusted person from what I understand. But that is the thing of, will you stop? Will you change your behavior slightly n knowing like, hey, this hurts my feelings? Well, I'm about like a, a solid decade in of creating television shows and yeah. movies. And uh, I, I've yet to stop. 
So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like every time I'm like, happened. and this is going to be the one that I won't. Uh, this is going to be. No, it's every time it's this is the time that every critic is going to be hop on board. Finally and then you look and you're like, fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but then you meet these critics and you're like, well, this movie isn't for you. You're like yeah. 70 years old. You're like, you're you're comparing me to like Mickey Rooney <laughs> and like Jack Lemon, which like I like cool. both of those. Very yeah. cool. And and you know, I me being in the industry, I really I know who those people are, but like people are in their twenties and thirties don't know who those people are in at fact, this point. Yes. yes. So that so I'm like it's just sort of a generational thing, too. And also, you meet Adam Sandler, who's never gotten good reviews. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, huh, would I rather be him mm -hmm. or I? And then there's really no or because he can do great movies when he wants and he can do his family, like his like big fun, happy Madison, yeah. silly, cool movies and be like a great dude. Yeah. It's like, though, well, that yeah, seems like he's he's one of my true heroes, that guy. An ideal, like that's an ideal outcome. Yeah. So, or, I mean, the, the, also think about who was famous when Sandler broke it. I mean, it's amazing. Like Jim Carrey doesn't even make movies anymore, hardly. I know. Um, Sucks. Yeah. Stiller doesn't really make movies anymore. He's directing. He's doing yeah, no, I know. cool, cool but stuff. I'm, but, but I'm yeah, saying right. like, it's not even like the fact that Adam's still doing He's it. He's like the one guy still churning out comedy yes. movies, which is in the world awesome. on earth and you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like that's a pretty good outcome. And again, never got a good review. And then when he started getting hot, he wouldn't do press. That's, that's which is move. my favorite part about him. That's so cool. Yeah. And then when he has it, Instagram or whatever, but he does not really on it. He just is like, yeah, post about the the movie, huh. and then they do. Yeah, he doesn't. He can't care about reviews. Yeah, he's the coolest, the best. You know, Mono. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Estás disfrutando de mi podcast? Thanks to Babbel. I know what that means. Do you, sucker? You know, I spent some time in Mexico City, and I jokingly said that I was studying Spanish. Well, many truths said in jest suckers because uh, I'm actually trying to speak Spanish with Babbel. The, look, the best way to learn a language is through immersion, like living where the language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not possible for everyone. So what's the second best way to learn a language? Babbel. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in tres semanas. Somebody's been learning Spanish with Babbel. That's three weeks. Sucka. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, and rooted in real-life situations delivered with conversation-based teaching. So look, I'm I'm like on I'm not deep into Babel, I'll be honest, but it's like helpful in terms of like saying stuff like trace same on us, dos por favor, you know, just like simple conversational stuff that you need when you're at a place at a restaurant and you can understand things in Spanish. You're not like ha huh, when you go to places. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash blocks, B-L-O-C-K-S. Get 55% off at Babbel.com slash blocks. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot C-O-M slash B-L-O-C-K-S for 55% off. Babble fifty five percent off b a b b e l dot com slash blocks. Guys, you know how buying to you, again. I say this all the time. You know how doing anything is stressful. You know how life is stressful. Well, buying tickets doesn't have to be. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. And maybe you'll stress about the outfit 
and who you're going with and who's going to Venmo you. There's other things to stress about. Life's going to give you stress, but not not game time. All right. So I now I use the thing. Let's just do the roundup of um of who's coming. Theater, Les Mis, no thanks. I don't need to say that's mean. I don't like musicals. You know, you know my theory. Whenever they start singing, I always stand up and say, just tell us. David Spade is available for uh at the Irvine Improv as we film this. Don't go on there now. Although maybe Spade is in near you now. David Spade, who kind of lives near me, and I see him uh walking dogs. And last time I saw him, he was a little faster getting out of the conversation than I would have liked. Uh, the Will Turn, there's a, I guess that's a band called Hermanos de Leche. Is that Hermanos de Leche? It's pretty good pronunciation, Neil. Mark Norman. Hey, Mark Norman. It's going to be at uh, the theater at the Ace uh, downtown in LA. Taylor Swift. I don't even want to talk about Taylor Swift because the Swifties are vicious. We'll just bleep the name. Taylor S, we'll call her. Um, all right, so here's some good parts about, about um, Game Time. Uh, the website, again, gametime.co. Uh, they got flash deals and last-minute tickets. They got easy-to-find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images of seat views, you know, I like that. You see what your vantage point's going to be. Low price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, et cetera. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BLOCKS for $20 off your first purchase. That's Blocks for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account and redeem Blocks for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices. Guaranteed. Smiles. This is a good one. Health. My body is falling <laughs> apart, dude. Not help. My body is falling apart. Health. Dot. 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 Yeah. My body falling. Tell us about your body falling apart, dude. It sucks. I'm. I really am. It's. Uh. Uh. I was hit by. I mean, you know this. But I don't. I do. <laughs> I <laughs> tell the people. Yes. So I was hit by a cement truck when I was a kid, and I couldn't walk for about two years, and I had dozens of surgeries. Uh, I, it crushed everything from my knees down, broke my left femur, broke my ribs, punctured lungs, the whole, like the whole thing. And I had to relearn how to walk. It was a long process. And then from then on, I was like, they told me they're like, you have to exercise to stay in good shape or else you might be in a wheelchair by the time they, they, they told me at 30, you might be in a wheelchair if you don't like stay in good health. And so, like, I did. So I worked out all the time, and I'm like, I am in good shape. Uh, and then just in the last couple of years, I think I, like, overdid it. I, like, worked out too much. Mm. And I, like, became, like, one of those guys that everyone hates that wears spandex and rides bicycles on the side of the road. I, as you were talking, I remember I have a picture on, of you on my phone <laughs> from the Best Buy commercial. There was somewhere you st- – Stuck your ass in the camera, sure, and just a little bit of ball is hanging out of the underwear. Really? Yeah. Did I never show you that? No, you have to send that. Come to on me. out. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I think I still have it on my phone. Bring out the because it's one the of these. Board. Board. I may have thrown it. I may have erased it, but like it made it a year. Wow. And then I was like, I don't know who it, I. I thought I already it, it sent got, it to you. You got you too horny. It gets yeah. me. It would get me too. It was a huge impediment to getting <laughs> yeah. things done. It was a real block for yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and there was no uh, podcast back then. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so you so you were obsessed with that, uh, rightfully obsessed with exercise. So yeah, so I'm sort of. I guess this is another block. I sort of like when I do a thing, I I maybe do it too much and I go overboard with the thing. Uh, Give me other examples. Like when I would do stand up, I did stand up seven days a week, mm-hmm. and I would never not be doing stand up, or. Uh, you know, when writing workaholics, I was obsessed with it. And like, I didn't have, I couldn't have like real relationships. Mm. And then now I feel like I've gotten to a point that I'm like, I just, I know it's not going to go away as quickly as I thought it might go away at the beginning when you're just trying to get yeah. established. Yeah. So I'm more comfortable just going like, no, I'm not, I'm fine. Not, uh, yeah. like, not yeah, I'll overworking do. myself. I know how to regulate that now. 
And did you get it with exercise as well? Well, now I'm figuring that out. I thought exercise was just a good thing. So I was doing it seven days a week and I was riding that damn bike like 200 plus miles a week. And so on the streets, on the streets, where would you ride? J uh, in around Orange County. I, I have Got a house it. down there. So I was just like all over up and down the beach. And I, uh, so I tore a ligament in my hip and I like tore my groin, my psoas muscle. Yeah. And essentially now I have to have surgery. And that was like a year and a half ago that all this happened. And I, and I can't walk. Like if I walk <laughs> more than a mile, like I have to sit down and, and I'm in like a ton of pain. So my body is falling apart and, uh, and it's, it scares me, dude, because you're like, you have to be able to walk. Okay. Well, let me ask about the original childhood stuff. What did you, how did you feel about it most of the time? Meaning I, if I, I felt like if I was like infirmed, body cast, rebuilt legs, I would feel extremely sorry for myself. No, I didn't really. I, I think that that was just like my mom was, was awesome and just would make me, would make me not feel that way. And it could have been worse. I could have been dead. And I'm gonna, that, that was pretty regularly like, yeah. Could have been much, much worse. Yeah. And like, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, it might be. And you agreed. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, this, well, this, I have like crazy scarring on my legs. I don't know. Uh, so I have like pretty crazy scarring, but it stops at the knees. Right. So I was like, that could have been my face. It could have been, which would have been, I probably wouldn't have had an acting career. Mm -hmm. Or you would have had one and gotten amazing reviews for bravery. Dude, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's going to be if I had an accident on my bike now, the road rash. That Look, you're only 40. Yeah, yeah I still have time. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get into motorcycle at some point. Um, and then, okay, so you're, and how did, did kid, were kids, I think the rap on kids is like they're so mean, but I also think what's underestimated is that can, they can be incredibly kind. Yeah, for the most part, I was like a new kid in school. So my family moved from Waterloo, Iowa to Omaha, Nebraska when I was 10. And then the accident happened when I was 11. So I was uh, the new kid in school. Yeah. And then the accident happened in that the summer going into sixth grade, which is where we changed from elementary school going into middle school. So I like st started sixth grade halfway through the school year because I was recovering and I'm in the wheelchair and I'm rolled in and it was actually pretty cool because I, I didn't know anyone. And they essentially already like had an announcement like, hey, Adam Devine, I was sort of famous for like being the, the kid who was hit by the cement truck in town. Yeah. And uh, it was it was awesome as, so far they as, were, as far as that goes. Yeah, they're not going to be like, look, you fucking there ew. were a few kids. Well, and then later you find out like the kid who bullied me was the kid who his dad died uh, fucking a prostitute, like had a heart attack and died. And so obviously he was dealing with his own stuff at home. <laughs> yeah. So he took it out on the on the cripple kid. But for the most part, it was it was like kind of a get out of jail free card where I knew that I could say crazy stuff Just because go, no don't one's make really me pull gonna... it up. Don't make me. I will pull it yeah, up. Yeah, totally. <laughs> if you don't, if you punish me for this, you're gonna get an eye. I, <laughs> yeah. Ouchie. <laughs> uh, and I knew that like no one's gonna. I mean, who knows nowadays, but. No one's going to like beat so up that, the crazy Just showing kid. that, do you feel like, or do you just feel like, I really don't give a shit? It means nothing. Now I don't care. Now yeah. I don't care. And the just only reason nothing. I don't show it in movies, like, because every once in a while people will be like, well, why are you wearing those high socks? Yeah. And I'm like, why well, is your balls on my phone? <laughs> hanging, hanging out on Neil Brennan's <laughs> phone. And it, essentially, I'm just like, I don't want to explain it in the movie. Like, the character doesn't exactly. have. And it'd be funny if you did it in every movie and it was a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, look. <laughs> well, the, And then I, was, I would be getting great reviews. You ever heard of uh, Iraq? Yeah. Well. I used to always make up stories, especially, like, if I'm at the beach and, like, kids would be like, oh, my God, what, what's with your legs? I'd be like, shark attack, San Mateo, 94. And and I did, literally said that to this little kid, and he goes, "Yeah, I heard about that." <laughs> like you were not, you were not born. Dude. That's like that bit Kimmel does at the gas station or the bands for uh, for fucking Coachella. One of my favorite bands this year is Doctor Shlomo and the GI Clinic. Yeah. 
They're amazing. Yeah, they're always amazing. Okay, so that's interesting. And then, so it didn't have like a major effect on your psyche that you're aware of, or it was just kind of like, well, mm. no, then I think it put, it gave me like a motivation uh, that I know for a fact I wouldn't have moved to LA because no one in, we didn't, we were a super blue collar family. Like going to college was, wasn't even mandatory. It was like, yeah, if you want to, or you can work for the railroad, like your dad and yeah. his brothers, like, or you can learn a trade. Yeah. It would like moving to Hollywood to, per, to wear makeup and pursue your dreams of being an actor seemed like. What the fuck? And did you, you want to do? Did what? it make you go like, well, I don't care because I shouldn't. I can't worry about that because I have I have a thing I need to prove. Well, it was like I wanted. That was a thing that I always wanted to do. I was I was a. I thought I was a funny kid. And weren't you? I liked didn't you start make, working young? Didn't you do something in your teens? No, Am no. I, I moved when I was eighteen, and then workaholics. Eighteen's kind of pretty big, early, though. Yeah, yeah. I moved out young. And then started and then did stand up and got new faces in Montreal when I was 22 and then work hooks when I was 25. So yeah. it was, it all happened pre in hindsight. And you it was worked, really I remember fast. you were in like a Doritos commercial somewhere. You were like the devil. Uh, Taco Bell. Volcano nachos. Yeah. yeah. And Joe and Anthony Russo directed that. Did they really? Commercial, yeah. Russo Brothers from, uh, they also did uh, from the Iron Marvel. Man. Or no, they did uh, Captain they America. Do, Captain America, and they did all yeah. the, the Avengers and stuff. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. Um, haven't, haven't gotten that call. Yeah, I'm what's still up, waiting. Joe and Anthony? Huh, weird. Ah. Weird. Uh, they must I have read the review. They must have <laughs> thought you changed your number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, happen, yeah. guys. Same happen. number. Same number. Don't, and don't try it on them. Don't be. You change your number, <laughs> motherfucker. It, it was Joe and Anthony Russo going, "Hey, Adam." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so okay. So you move out. You move out here, and then. Do, so what's the what's the when you said I would it made me want to sort of. What about the injury made you well, want it not was, like they're directly, but what? How do you see the correlation? For me, it was it was just my motivation of like, you can't be lazy, like because you're gonna die, so you have to try to get as much stuff in as possible because you never know. When a cement truck might come out of nowhere, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah. But for, I mean, honestly, that is, you know, I, uh, that is the truth. That's interesting. That, well, that's the good thing about, I, I've said it on here, which is the only thing that makes people change is almost dying. Yeah. I mean, for sure. And it happens so young that it just sort of, it just like lit something inside of me. And, but also I was young enough and naive enough that I was like, oh, I can pull it off. Yeah. Like I, I remember my dad used to watch Evening at the Improv yeah. on like A&E or whatever yeah. it was on. And it was Bud Freeman at the Improv. And I'm sure that's where we met initially because yeah. I was there One of all those the places, time. Yeah. And I remember watching it and it wasn't like the big comics that like seen uh -huh. Eddie Murphy or someone yeah. or Chris Rock. It was like seeing like the regular guys that their jokes are okay and uh -huh. they're getting laughs. And they're on TV. And I was like, well, I can do that. Yeah. Like, that's I can, the, the rock actually says there's the mediocre inspirations. Yes. That's, <laughs> it wasn't Chris they're Rock. They're almost more inspiring than the greats. Yes. Because you go, I don't know. Well, you're like. And then, and then you can. <laughs> and you're like, you look at Eddie and Chris or Dave and when you're like. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get there. Yeah, like I'll try yeah. to get there. If not, I'll get. It's still a nice you know, life. A nice, a great yeah. life. It's a good life. Uh, so essentially, and the, and and that was it. And then I moved out here and started to do it. When did you get good? Do you think? Uh still. still when were waiting. you finally funny? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this last movie, according to the New York Times. What a Thanks. ride! I know, man. What a slog! Yeah, damn. A series. Yeah, and seven fifteen movies. years. Yeah, fifteen years in. I. Uh, a, f a couple years in, I would say I I've, I started to feel like I I I was doing what I what I set out to do. You always what, by the time I saw you, I probably saw you in a oh, wait. You, I think you you had a good you had a good joke about like alcohol voices maybe. It was like beer. Oh yeah, I would. I had like a runner about your beer talking to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was like it felt like yeah. This is like what you're. 
my brand of yeah. yeah but not even your it's like what it's like your belief system it's Who not even you your are. brand it's not yeah. like you chose it well what shall i that be? was i it was like when i was really young i saw like brian regan or someone mm -hmm. it was brian regan i saw him at the irvine improv when i was 18 i can tell you crushing 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 like you he's the first person i ever saw in a club yeah when i was like 14 in new york and Chappelle saw him the same year and we've agreed like i've still never heard laughs like that you too he was an absolute a fucking monster yes and like i was gonna post about him yesterday like this guy is so fucking good it's crazy and way underappreciated yeah. and he is so funny and I was 18 and afterwards I like waited for him to come out of the mm -hmm. club. I'm like there by the the PF Changs or whatever the hell's uh -huh. right there. And I'm I like he comes out and I go, Brian, I'm I'm a comic. I'm I'm trying to get into it. W do you have any advice for me? And he he's like, Don't try to like get get a persona. Like don't tr put on someone else's persona. Just do comedy and then you your personality will end up being the persona. Yeah. And I just took that to heart and was like, okay, I'm going to just try to be me uh, <laughs> and, and, and maybe fail a lot. But, uh, but at some point it'll click. And I think it was, it happened fairly quickly for me that I felt comfortable because it's, it's just about being comfortable on stage right. at first and then having your material catch up to that. Yeah, you're right. It's like just getting reps. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's the upside of that workaholism is mm -hmm. it's not, you didn't get worse at comedy. No, that's, that's there. I don't think there is a thing as comedy is one of those things. I don't think you can get worse at from doing too much. I think you, if you do too many, like kind of, I, or yes and no. Well, uh, to, to me, I'm like now, the, once you, once you have the chops, you don't need to go up every night. Yeah. Like, you know, like I feel like Chris Rock doesn't go up every night now. Mm -mm. When he's getting ready for a special, yeah. he writes and writes and writes, yeah. and then he goes and tries his material and gets yeah. the reps that way. Yeah. Um, but when you're starting, you have to just get up every night writing, like, yeah. in the hallway, trying to figure your bits out, and then trying that every night and getting yeah. the reps. Yep. I, that's what happened during COVID. I think a lot of people were like, I don't need to do it as yeah. much as I was doing it. When you were a kid, did somebody read Everybody Poops? by Taro Gomi to you. I'm so old, I was an adult when that book came out. Let's just say many adults have forgotten the details. Not this one. Pooping Anxiety, I read it, I thought it was just a regular book. Pooping Anxiety, a colorful regular book, but a regular book nonetheless. Pooping Anxiety, self-controlled constipation, which maybe I do, or nervous diarrhea are conditions many adults experience throughout their lives. But at the end of the day, it's just poop. And Seed's DSO-1 makes it easier to go. I don't know why go is in quotes because I've just said poop seven times. Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic supports healthy regularity, healthy motility, and ease of evacuation. There's also increasing research on the gut-brain axis, which Seed is currently researching in partnership with Axial Therapeutics. It promotes digestive health to support healthy regularity and ease of bloating. Uh, it reinforces healthy stool hydration and ease of evacuation. You know what's funny? The older I get, the more I realize, like, for m much of my life, I wasn't really doing toilet stuff properly. When I hear stuff like, wait, it's supposed to be easy? Guys, wasn't always easy. You know, you look at me, you go, it's always been easy for that guy in the toilet. Hasn't always been. Look, they sent me some seed. I have a habit of taking kind of any pill. I kind of not not picky. But I will say that this seed pill got the attention of my stomach and it expedited the process. We'll say that. I don't, you know, I don't like talking too, you know, specifically. We'll just say it expedited the process and it made it a regular fixture of my daily life. Start a new healthy habit today. Visit seed.com slash N-E-A-L and use code N-E-A-L to redeem 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed.com slash Neil and use code N-E-A-L. Here's a huge one. <laughs> I eat too much rotisserie chicken. Give him the deuces. 
on that one. <laughs> Stupid, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't know what to write. I was no, no. But did you go? To- <laughs> <laughs> you asked me to write these no. blocks, dude. Uh, like I said, I'm fairly well adjusted. I, yeah. I don't. But I you, feel, like you, I I have feel a- like there's some truth to it. Yeah. Where are you getting this chicken? In the grocery store, man. I like so, so you much- just are going to Ralph's or wh- whatever. We'll yeah. bleep whatever your home. Yeah, your yeah, home yeah. The pavilions. Yeah, pavilions. He's a pavilions guy. Yeah, I'm a pavilions boy. Uh, deuces. <laughs> um. Yeah, I it, well, dude. It, I mean, this is a gross story, but like, I, I shit out a rope. Wild. Now, are they ropes or are they string? You tell me. <laughs> Let me see it. They're, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the string that ties it together, and then I, I, I would, I just eat it like a. Is that a true story? It's a, so real, dude. It's so real, and it's scary. How much rope? This long, just this long. I thought I had a tapeworm or something. I was like, "What the?" <laughs> you had chicken rope with the a chicken new thing. Rope. Yeah, it's diagnosed. Your body it's in can the... pass it. Um, and uh, are you doing it in contests? No, oh. no. Well, it's, it's like I said earlier. It's like once I get on a thing, I'll just like, I'll, I'm the same with like a song, where like my wife hates it because if I like a song, I'll just play it on repeat for months. And it's the same song over and over. And I love it because it's like, I'm not even listening to it at this point. It just like puts me in a mood. Yeah. And it's the same way with like a food. If I, I like, I got on a rotisserie chicken kick and then it's every day rotisserie chicken. And my wife's like, do we want to have something else today? Maybe <laughs> some pasta yeah, or a salad. And yeah. And ropes. I'm just like, just <laughs> hot sauce. Like, Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I would say it's a it's a block. Get out of my me. chicken coop! You're in, living in a chicken coop at this point, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, like it, just wearing a tarp. Yeah, in but an I open feel like that coop. wasn't a real one. I just I just added that because I I figured you might. No, laugh. that's very but, funny. Yeah. <laughs> I also just remembered you're in Pitch Perfect. Good job. Yeah, yeah, man. Please don't stop the. Please don't stop the. Please don't stop the music. Because I was like a picture of you singing. I was like, where do I know that image from? Yep. Oh, yeah. Pitch Perfect. I stay singing. I'm doing a Pitch Perfect spinoff show. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah. In Germany. Bumper in Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jamila's on it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's great. And yeah. our, when are you going back? Uh, Well, when the strike, the strike you know, we're, we're striking. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to. And do, so did you stop with the chicken for me to not? I've cooled it recently. Uh, after the rope incident. That feels like a sign. Yeah, I think it, it was that maybe, and also like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not slowing down enough to not eat the rope. Maybe it's time to reevaluate my, my choices. I mean, it had, it would have to get pretty wild for well, me to not know. I also feel know. like I've, I've gained a bunch of weight, like not even like, I'm not particularly fat, but like, I think I'm just like a bigger guy yeah, now. Yeah, you're thicker, yeah. Because I think I'm just, just eating too much goddamn protein. I was like, protein. You don't need, look up how much protein you really need. You don't need I was like nearly protein as much loading as, like I was a bodybuilder yeah. or something. Not even trying to do that just because I love eating <laughs> rotisserie Rubs. chickens. So, uh, you know. Wild. Maybe, maybe I cool it. Or not. Hey, I like your <laughs> attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't. Yeah. So thank you for the support of my attitude. How were you, you were living there for four or five months, Germany? Yeah, like four months. Did uh-huh. you like it? Berlin. Yeah, it was cool. It was uh it was a weird place, man. I I really liked it. I took German in high school, mm. so I weirdly could get around a little bit. I mean, it was still COVID times. Right. So the clubs were shut down and then halfway through the clubs opened up. And uh I didn't go because I'm the head of the show and if I get COVID, the whole production shuts down. You I mean, you like to yell that to people on the phone, right? Yeah, I'm always I'm the head of the I'm show. I'm the head of the show. Goodbye. You know um, how to reach me. Never and, gonna change. And so I I I didn't go to these nightclubs, but like like we me my wife and I were at a restaurant and the maitre d was like, How are you like in Germany? Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, sehr gut, love it here. And they go, have you been to Bergheim? Which is like the club. Yeah. And we're like, no. And they're like, oh, it's fantastic. The piss parties. Your table's ready. And we're like, the piss parties? Sir. 
Yeah, I was like, explain yeah, more yeah. about these piss parties. And apparently there's a guy who's like in his 60s now that goes by the piss goblin. Okay, I'm getting harder. And he, Go ahead. Uh, and he will lay down in like the trough of the men's bathroom and just like, and you piss on his face. And then there's like grates that people will just like squat down or, or whip the thing out and piss. And he'll be underneath the grates like, Okay. And and this is this is Berlin, man. And it's not not everybody. My favorite part about living there was like meeting the grips, meeting the like mm -hmm. electric guys mm -hmm. who are just blue collar mm -hmm. workers that work on a production and they're super normal. They just go back to their wife and kids and they're super normal, regular guys, very nice. And they're like, it's not yes, there are those people here in Berlin, but not everybody's like that. And then I stayed at the Soho house. And like the, I've been to that actual Soho house. Yeah, and they have a cool bar upstairs, and but it's a scene. And on like you know the weekends or whatever, my wife and I are up there. It's eleven o'clock. It's midnight. We're having some drinks, and then you just see like a gang of guys in like leather S and M gear mm -hmm. with like a chain connecting their nipples down to like uh -huh. somewhere else, somewhere just else. You don't know where. Who yeah. knows? And they're. Literally, they had an awesome rotisserie chicken. At the, would, you go, and I, would you go up and say, hey, I shit ropes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if you like that rotisserie chicken. Yes, I don't, this chain might, stuff's yeah. fine, but I if shit ropes. If you're going where I think you're probably going. Just, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll walk give you, you I'll give it. you this rope. Um, and and seeing like these guys just eat rotisserie chicken there, it was, it was a scene. It was a full circle moment. Yeah, it, it really sure was. sounds like. Been to Germany once. And did you go to the Holocaust thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I obviously it's like a nice, well laid out, but just like the fact that seven thousand, seven million Jews were killed, and like a third of them were Polish, yeah, was striking to me because so Polish people, and then remember, so Polish people are like, like a lot of them die, mm -hmm. and then remember when we were growing up, did you have Polak jokes? Yeah, which I'd never understood. I didn't I don't, either. I didn't feel like I even knew any Polish people. Right. So. But it's also like, hey, guys, maybe give them a break for a little bit. For sure. Like, just maybe not. Maybe just kill that whole genre. Whole, well, don't say kill. But yes. Incinerate? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Put on trains and guests. But uh, no, no, no. But why? <laughs> uh, I Yeah, I feel um, j also just how literal Germans are. Like, the, the name of the of the museum is like the the monument to the murdered Jews of Europe. And you're like, this is so I just did answer like, I feel like we would gloss that up in America. Uh and but they're just like, this is what it is. This is exactly what it is. Murder con. Something like that. Something you know I mean? fun, something jazzy. Uh <laughs> the murder sell, sell the, really expensive tickets. Uh the Holocaust of doing business. I, I'm just now in my brain. I'm not even, I can't, I'm not responsible anymore. I'm not signing this waiver. I had done London two nights, go to Amsterdam and I'm just kind of bombing. Mm -hmm. And it made me laugh so hard. Cause I like the first few jokes where you're trying to gauge and you're like, uh -oh. oh, I heard Amsterdam people didn't have good sense of humor. And then people, and then you make a joke out of it and it's whatever. Mm -hmm. But and then people were like, why did you keep saying you were bombing? It was, I felt bad for the organizer or whatever. It's like, because that's bombing to me. What was happening yes. was my version of bombing. I'm not going to write my standard down. Like, yeah, German, well, I mean, obviously Amsterdam isn't in Germany, but I feel like it's a similar. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, were they, like my assistant was this very funny, like 22 year old girl, very sweet. Uh, and we got along great. But like, you'd say something to her and she'd be like, and I'm like, I'm joking. She's like, <laughs> very funny. Yeah. And you're like, well, I'll tell your whole face. Like, because it's not, what you're giving me isn't, it's funny. you are just got to laugh at it. She's like, yeah. And then she would like try to be like, ah, ah, ah. and you're like, that is not. Yeah. Like, I don't, you hate to fire someone for not laughing enough. <laughs> But nah, I, sounds if like anything, I gave her a raise. I, I thought it was great. Danny, take notes. Yeah. <laughs> See, he and he really gave us a nice yeah, laugh. Nice, nice. <laughs> it believable too. This is a, this is let's bring the let's bring it down a little bit. Let's oh. downshift. I don't love crime or mass shootings. 
controversial as hell. Yeah, dude, go on, go do tell, dude. I, I don't okay, like so, it. Okay, so okay, true like crime it. podcast, true crime documentaries. Yeah, I feel like I I'll watch watch it and be intrigued by it, but I'm not like when people are too into it, it is off putting it to me. It's I'm just like, odd. I, yeah, again, like, I'm in, I don't mind them. Yeah, I'll watch them. Like if if one is like a huge hit on Netflix, sure. I'll be like, all right, well, what is what's everyone watching? Yeah, uh, but I, it's not it's not doing it for me. And it's just like the amount of uh, crime now in the in this city. How like people are just going up to people on the street and just robbing them like as they're eating a salad on a si- at a sidewalk cafe. Like it's shit's terrifying. Yeah. Thank God you have a safe house in Orange <laughs> County. <laughs> um, I know what you mean. I don't the, the the crime thing hasn't like struck me very closely. I just was in Mexico there was City. A, there was a murder across the street from my house just a few weeks ago. Where in Hollywood? Like what was the scenario? Uh, my neighbor would throw a big uh, like poker game, like and a Mo- you murdered him. Game, <laughs> yeah. Molly's game. It was just too loud. Uh, and then I don't, I think it was like a hit. It was like a full on guy came and murdered the one person and then left. Didn't steal anything, I don't think. And oh, I don't, I think that would have happened before Gavin Newsom. Well, I'm not and, blaming. No, 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 I know, but I, <laughs> but everybody makes it into this whole thing of like, cause the, cause they did this and now well, you I don't can even rob, think you that. can go I to CVS and everything's locked up and whatever. Like, I just think it's COVID. People got so used to wear like it's the the masks to me were at least the crime. I don't know about murders, but like the crime thing is like people are so used to seeing people in masks. I feel before COVID, you you would have been saw like somebody in masks. You would who are walk all those, away from them. Those yeah. kids in masks. By the way, they're all wearing Nike. What the fuck's it called? Tech. Yeah, the tech zipper with the tight hood. Uh-huh. Yeah, if they're you see, all wearing. If that. you see a, a child dressed like that, and he's wearing, beware, they're, they're, they're beware. wearing. A lot of them wear like <laughs> Yeezy slides too, which is like, oh, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, they're what robbing a do? jewelry all, store and all of Yeezy them. slides. Every yeah. one of those smash and grabs is a bunch of like kids in the tech fit, like sliding on the way out. <laughs> I yeah, had another. Just, uh, I like how they're. It's it's for sure never planned because they're all just sort of like in loungewear. It's robbing, robbing a every, Nordstrom's, right? But I, but they clearly not all decided, but they all saw like that's a very indistinguishable outfit. Sure, it's narrow, it's hooded. I I look this up one time. You know, in whenever there's looting, people come out and instantly slip. Hmm. <laughs> The thing when they come out with a hand, they and I was like, "Why do they slip?" I just Google, Google, why, Google do slip? why do they slip? The glass, yeah, that makes. Someone sense. broke the glass and they come yeah. out. It's fucking the yeah. the mark. So they use slides because it. Well, I, the slides thing is just they're just they want to yeah, be they want to be lit. Yeah, and I get that's that true. if anyone that's gets true. it. Yeah, it's yeah, dude. Liddy Neal, <laughs> it's Liddy Neal for sure. And as the mic goes down, Liddy yeah. Neal is signing out. <laughs> Um, oh, fuck. It's lit. <laughs> um, that's when I knew I was old. When someone that I considered like a peer, but they were much younger than me, mm-hmm. were like, "It's lit," but genuinely said that, and I was like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, it was pretty lit," and I was like, I- "I've aged out. I'm an old man now." Well, Adam, I'm older than you, and uh, do you, you genuinely gotta make, say you got to? Do I use? Uh, no cap. I mostly don't. Mostly don't. But you know, I'm on a lot of black text threats. Yeah. You know how I I, I I'm a member of many black text threats. I, yeah, I bet you. And are, you yeah. find yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, no you cap. Find your, like last night, I was on one of my famous black tweet t- text threads, <laughs> and I was like. Some some this bitch and I'm like I don't know if I need to say this like it's my it's my yeah my class's slang sure yeah but d- do your friends ever call you out and be like Neil you no don't have no to, well they're not gonna call me out you don't have to for, try to fit for in this with us. bitch yeah uh, well yeah this bitch that's a um that yeah one, that one's fine yeah you uh, could say this bitch. but it was just like am I 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what am I? You you really do have to make decisions. Like, am I gonna say it's lit? Yeah. Am I gonna say that? Like, am I gonna say it's lit or no cap or fucking what are the other ones? Crunk. Um, <laughs> Like no, but you really do. Well, have for do. sure, I'm going to say crunk. Well, I first uh, of all, there's just, just sipping the on my basic, crunk juice here. No, I know <laughs> that. Like, is this too stupid for me to say it at any age? Yeah. So when I'm 29, did I say crunk? No. No. I sh- could have. Yeah. Well, did, did you ever they, say? Did, I feel did, like I used to even say it crunk specifically, like as a bit, like around my friends that would think it's funny if I'm saying crunk. Well. But lit, I, I, I could, it felt too far away yes, from, agreed. from now, my age group. My question for you is, you had a show on Comedy Central, as did I. Mm-hmm. Did Little John send five cases of crunk juice to the edit? I do think we had crunk <laughs> juice, and I'm not joking about that. <laughs> that crunk juice. Well, I thought I was going to zing you on that, yeah, but, yeah, I, I, do but think we I tried had to pull juice. rank, and I failed. We, they, we got a lot of things sent to that Yeah, office. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, and you, what don't you love about mass shootings? <laughs> Kidding. You know what's this? I this, I'm actually want to mention this. I'll cut it or not. So a friend of mine was in the Vegas mass shooting, the, the country music one. Scary. The thing that you don't realize is July second through fifth is a nightmare for her. Oh, I bet. Like it's a real like PTSD. Not like I have PTSD. Like. I like actually real. have a traumatic event that I can point to. That's terrifying. Where I heard bullets whizzing past me and saw dozens of people die. Mm-hmm. So that's, it's like, there's things like that that are awful when it's happening. And then the fucking shadow is chasing you forever, which is a thing. It's like, you know, uh, when girls are anorexic, they, after they if they have it long enough, they can't digest certain food. And it's like, I didn't know that. It's wow. fucking awful. Yeah, that sucks. I know. It's fucking awful. And you don't, wow. it's just these awful things that you're like, oh, that's nothing. Like, yeah. you never it really consider it. And then someone you. tells you what happened. You're like, oh, fuck. Like, then you actually say, I'm sorry. Because um, before that, I never apologized. <laughs> uh, mass shootings, everybody. Doesn't like them. I'll go on record. Number five. Did I mention the rotisserie chicken thing? <laughs> You did. Uh, okay, good. I mean, I feel like we, um, if it were a rotisserie chicken, we, as a th- subject, everyone who watches this would have, would be shitting ropes. Do you follow me? Did you get the metaphor? Mm, it kinda. like kind of works. You, yeah. I need you to go with me, guys, yeah. for once. Yeah, I sort of get it. Um, we're all going to be shit. Uh, uh, Divine's coming by. We're all going to be we're shitting, all ropes. shitting ropes. <laughs> yeah. And that's going to be my did next stand up special is shitting, div- shitting ropes. <laughs> It's not the it's worst lit. title I've ever heard. Deuces. <laughs> it's not the worst title I've ever heard. And did Divine come by last night? Yeah. Was it like rope shit in Divine? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Nah. He was nah. regular. He was just yeah, eating. Norm. Eating. He actually was eating ice cream. Yeah. He's just fat ass Divine. <laughs> yeah. Fat ass protein. He was proteined up. I guess I don't want to be old. <laughs> Dude, I'm so... I. It, it, no, 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 no. I feel like I, I need to I, have more no, no, no. problems to be on this podcast, and nope. I'm sorry to, nope. to... We've had, look, we had Jay Leno and David Letterman on here. Okay. Need, both multi, have more money than you could I, yeah. you and I could ever dream of. Yeah, they're true. 75. They're hugely successful. Mm-hmm. They got problems. But what about, our, do you fear aging? Do you fear aging and death? I, well, I just want to be able to do the things that I like to do. And, and it's, it, it goes back to my health thing, where uh, I'm afraid... Cause it, like that doctor told me when I was a kid, like there's a strong possibility you could just be in a wheelchair. Like you're, everything could did just. You, did they explain how? Meaning like this deteriorates the, or you just were like, well, yep. I'm just like my knees are, I've had four ACL surgeries here. I've had two over here, meniscus. Every, everything's just very weak. So at some point I'll need new knees. I'll need new hips. And then you're a little robot person, and who knows? There's a revolution coming. Yeah. So um, I'll have AI legs, and it'll they'll turn on me. <laughs> well, I just start kicking me. myself in the head. Um, yeah. Hit so, restart. Hit restart. Hit re- <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean it's it's nerve wracking as far as that that stuff goes. Uh, I Will don't... it affect your lungs, heart, or mind? Obviously, no one wants you in a wheelchair. No, uh, one, but I'm saying like. 
I feel like if those stay intact, you'll at least be alive. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think those, yeah, so those that's are good. okay. Yeah. And are Luckily. your parents, how old are your parents? They are 60, my mom turned 65 uh, in like a month, a couple months. Right. Yeah. And, and my dad is a couple years older, 67. And are they like active and yeah. spry? Yeah. My dad just battled lung cancer, which was like the scariest thing that I've ever had to deal with. Uh, and you don't even, th you know, you just sort of cruise along with your life and you, you know. Things have been going pretty damn good for me. Can't complain. But then, like, something like that happens, and I was just like, well, fuck my whole world. Yeah. Like, I, I will cash it all in just to have dad be healthy. And uh, and now he's he's in remission. He's he's looking good. He's feeling good. And um, and thank God. Well, the funny thing is, like, you, you could name a price, and it's like, no, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. It's just, like, nature. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so like, that I'm was going to defeat it. That was really, really hard. It was harder than because every everyone goes through something like that. With and their a, you have a ton of experience being him, in a way. It's none of these were fatal, like life or death, like flip a coin type things. But yeah. did it make you? Were you surprised by your reaction to it? Yeah, it like hit me like a ton of bricks. I was actually on set of the Righteous Gemstones, and my parents called. Forgot you're on that. And good um, job. Thanks. And uh, guy stays working. Come on, guys. Season Come on, three, Adam. Right Don't now. Don't be that way. Come on, give me some. Give I me know some. you're on a lot hey, of stuff, and dude, you were lit. in Pitch Perfect, and <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> Deuces. We're fam, uh, fam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they called, and we were, we were doing this silly scene, you know, of like, and I'm I'm dressed like a lunatic on that show. And, yeah. and they called, and they're like, hey, we have something that we need to tell you. Um, are you? Your mom and dad? You, yeah. And they've never called like that. Yeah. And so I'm like, what? What is it? And they're like, oh, if you're at work, we, we'll just talk to you after work. And I'm like, you ruined well, it. Now I mean, you have yeah. to tell me now. Yeah. And I'm, they were like, we really don't think we should tell you now. We really think we need to tell you after work. And I'm like, dad has cancer, right? Because he was smoked for like 30 years of my mm. life. And uh, and they were like, yes. And then that that next scene, I was like. They were like, you really sucked. You really sucked that last take. And I'm like, oh. And admittedly, like, it was hard because I didn't tell anyone for a couple weeks. And, like, it was really hard to get through those scenes. And, like, Jody Hill and Danny were coming up to me and being like, you good? Because yeah. you're not doing good, basically. Yeah. Um, But it, it was because, like, I couldn't think of anything else. And I went home that night. I took a bath. I've never taken a bath. I took a bath. And, like, just sat in a bathtub with, like, a... A, a bottle of wine. My wife was working. She was in Hawaii working, uh, shooting something. So like it was just me home alone, and and then I had a couple of days off. So it was just I just like got drunk for two days by myself, which I'm like I don't do that. Like I don't drink alone. Would you drink, pass out, wake up, immediately drink? Mm -hmm. Wow. And it uh, it it was really scary and. And then, what was the what were you feeling like meaning what were you experiencing like he's gonna die and that it's not gonna see my baby like what yeah, kind of stuff yeah that and it, and it was mostly like i was afraid to feel those feelings so i'm like i'll numb it with alcohol and i felt i truly felt like i was just falling it like it felt like you know that initial drop yeah it just felt like that for like a solid two or two or three days where it's just like the world is my, my dad and I are, are yeah. super, super close. And my mom, too. Like, I'm very close with my family. And, uh, you know, like, it, it would have been so easy for them to just be like, just stay in Omaha. You don't need to move to Hollywood and, like, chase this crazy dream. It, they didn't know anyone in Hollywood. Like, what they had to sacrifice to allow me to move out here and pursue this insane thing that we mm -hmm. all come out of uh was a lot was a lot for them and uh, they they just mean so damn much to me i mean maybe chicken get, rope uh, <laughs> both of us knew it's like pouncing yeah, who's gonna call it real, back first yeah, uh-huh like who's gonna call this who's back? gonna call it Are you back? gonna get it Fuck, uh, you got it i was so i'll do the other callback which is maybe you should get your own phone line <laughs> <laughs> you put them through so much <laughs> all right here is the guys. You got to have two callbacks at all times. <laughs> you got one over here. Yeah. Chicken bones over here. Chicken rope. 
and then fucking uh, cell phone service. Um, there, there. You got to figure out what your chicken rope is and what your cell phone service <laughs> uh-huh. is in every conversation. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is comedy self defense. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. Um, hi ya. Hi, <laughs> hi ha. Hi ha. <laughs> um, okay. Have you? Final two questions. Have you? What have you done in your life in terms of like self? Not even self help. Just to, what's been helpful to you as a habit change that. Uh, really made you feel better overall, or you know, you know what I'm asking? Like, what yeah. have you changed? That, what changes have you made in your adulthood that you're happy you made? Well, I feel like I haven't done. I've never been to a therapist. I've never gotten any kind of help like that. Well, because you're not weak. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I'm not a better weak bitch. Help. Uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> dot com. Uh, no, and I'm not opposed to it. And maybe I will take it up uh, at some point. And yeah. there was for sure a time in my life when I should have done that. Also, when, who needs therapy when you have alcohol? Yeah, true. <laughs> um, but it was, I mean, it's like a dumb, like, Instagram quote yeah. of that. But, uh, but it was something that I don't even know where I've heard it first. But it was like, in your 20s, you care about what everyone thinks. In your 30s... You care. You don't care what people think, and then in your forties, you realize that no one cared about you at all. Yeah, or thought about you yeah. at all. People care about you, but and and that but is not that much. yeah. But I mean, it's true. <laughs> no, it's like yeah. you care about your family and you love your family, but like everything else is like no one's thinking about you. Yeah, like no one. When you go to a party and you say something dumb, they think about you in that moment. And you're like, idiot. You said a dumb thing, and then immediately they don't remember that you said it because they're thinking about themselves. Of course. And, and that, yes. And, and, and it's just like, and my ha- wife hates this because it's like, like nihilism or something of like, just nothing really matters. Like, it's fine. The bad reviews that I've gotten, it's fine. I still am working. Like, I'm a nice person. People like to work with me. Uh, it's fine. It's, it's yeah. all going to be okay. And even when it isn't okay, even when you get hit by the cement truck, in life, deuces. Uh, it's it's fine. Guys, you know, a you just real pros. you put the your callback. <laughs> we're the callback kings. Signing out. <laughs> you just put your head down and and get through the issue that you're dealing with, and it's all about the the mental uh, aspect of it, and going like, well, how can this work for me? Mm-hmm. And having and realizing that it's just it's gonna be fine because it always is. Like when you have the the mindset of like it's not gonna work out, it never works out, it's not gonna work out, then it for sure won't. It just won't work out. Well, what do you make of your dad survived, right? Temporarily. I mean, obviously we're all gonna die eventually, but so you had a positive attitude for this one. If it recurs, will you? You know what I mean. Eventually, you're. N- the positive attitude is not going to make a difference. Do you know what I mean? For sure. In yes. terms of positive thinking versus negative thinking. Yes. Uh, I mean, and that's just, and that's just life. Like we're all going to die, and yeah. at some point, the luck will run out, mm-hmm. and it, it'll be okay. And I'm sure my dad will, at that point, uh, he'll be fine with it. Yeah. Um, I think it was just, you know, initially when something obviously there's tragedies yeah. and. People have to deal with some really, really heavy stuff, and you at the moment you might not think it'll it'll ever get better, but it it will. It always does until you die. It doesn't. Yes, it doesn't always get better, but it it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. It gets more manageable, if that's the right word. Yeah, like you're able. Uh, the more time goes on, you're like, it's not all encompassing. It's not all you think about. Yeah, it just evaporates quicker. Mm-hmm. The the hardship. It's just like you're like fuck it. Ah, you're in free fall for two days, and then eh, you get out of it. You can't when you're you, in the free you fall. Climb you climb out of the bathtub. The yeah, wrinkliest you the bathtub, you've ever been. I, you never left. <laughs> um, you were you were you were the bathtub man for that weekend, right? <laughs> uh huh. You were like, I should fucking monetize this. Was like, this is a really Can good live stream. Drive me uh, up to L. A. Should I start Twitch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you have to bring then this you have to let thing. people come into your house yeah. I was think, thinking take the, the tub to the club uh, <laughs> tub tub to the club and then the club. and then let, let the, let yeah, the, the rest the tub man is here everybody <laughs> uh, tub to the club 
and and then you let the let the let urine take care of the rest. You let people's uh, urinary tracts do yeah, the, the rest. Piss goblin. Yeah, but yeah. you're charging one fifty. Yeah, you're making money. Well, yeah, doing plus it. you get like a Chirac. <laughs> Is that still a cool brand? You get a Ciroc, you, yeah. You yeah. get a co a blueberry flavor initial drop. Yeah, you get like a you get a co brand. Yeah, piss. <laughs> I mean, what doesn't it have? Now, okay, so you're that uh, again. Not to over. But what do you see the if movie of your life? This is always my final question. It's annoying, but it's there's something to it. Movie of your life. What's the story? Who plays you? Of. Uh, movie of my life like with an arc what's the arc you know i i, I always like i love a good uh like rags to riches like biography yeah. and then you know hopefully it's something like that hopefully it's not too tragic but i feel like there's always in a good biography like they were shooting heroin in their eyeballs for a few years there and then mm -hmm. they climb out of it uh luckily i've never like my addiction was just like sugar-free red bulls <laughs> So, I mean, I, I, I drank so many monster energy drinks, specifically sugar-free, uh, that I had uh, gallstones. Like, I pissed, like, kidney stones or whatever. Um, and I had to go to the hospital. It was, you know, I just, do, I just do things too that much. That one's on you, boss. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so, the, yeah, I feel like my it wouldn't be that good of a story. You're like, this is no, the you're second missing half the of the whole second story. Act. The whole story is <laughs> you almost die. Sure, and then, but that happened so early, Neil. But you got that have something, informs what's everything. Gonna happen you in have the second what, half of the second act. You're in the tub. Okay, all right. You're in the tub, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> have you never written narrative before? Oh wait, you did seventy episodes. It's that you get a perspective, sure, that you wouldn't have gotten any other way. Then it informs. It seems to inform everything after it. Obviously, you have to forget about it and then re remember it. Once you climb out of the tub, your father survives, mm -hmm. and uh, and your mom enters and whispers to both of you, "Could be worse. Could be worse." And then uh, I wrote half baked. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote half baked. I know what I'm doing. Guys, relax. Uh, I wrote half baked. So, uh, yabba zabba, you're my <laughs> only friend. Abba zabba. You my only friend. Walk past the building. Dave, the I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then who would play it? it would, you know, it, someone that would, you know, hopefully a funny person. Uh, you know, Robin Williams, if he was still here, that, uh, that'd be cool. Did you not hear? What? About Robin? What happened? It's good. San Francisco. All right, cool. Good, 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 good. San, just he's a fellow a great cyclist. Ride his so, bike. So, yep. Yeah, ride his bike. Cyclist. He's done. He's training. So for it has a, to be just someone for, current. Not, I have to say like a current. I have to be like the I, kid from look, Riverdale we or don't something. Give directions here. Yeah. On, well, the, so I just said if he's still a uh, if he was still around, Robin Williams. Oh yeah, I had already decided on the joke. Yeah, I know. I could tell by the time by the time you <laughs> fucking spilled it. And of course, it's called shit, shit and ropes. Yep, shit and ropes. <laughs> the rope shitter. The, yeah, Adam Devine, the shitty rope story. The rope shitter. I think the rope yeah, shitter. Yeah, the rope shitter. Yep. That was it. That was blocks, guys. <laughs> pretty, pretty fun episode, and we wouldn't be the callback kings if we, if didn't, we didn't throw do up that. deuces. deuces.